bass down below. It's a good sign though. It is, yeah. Tomahawk bass are one of those fish that if you can find them in shallower depths, they are super challenging. Jake, you got one? Yes, sir. Really fun, and when you land on them, Tomahawk. there are so many fish there. There we go. First one of the morning. You could fish 30 spots on this lake and never see a single smallmouth bass, and then you land on one spot that's 50 yards by 50 yards, and there's literally hundreds of fish there. So we're going to have a, a, a little bit of fun with these guys today, and we'll share with you a little bit more about smallmouth bass through the ice. Okay, so this is good. This is rolling. Lower, set it in there. Let's see what it does. It's amazing how concentrated these smallmouth bass can be. And a number of years ago in Minnesota, they changed the regulations to be a catch and release only for smallmouth bass on the 15th of uh, September. And that's simply to protect these fish because when they are wadded up like this, it is absolutely crazy how many fish can be in one spot. I mean, Jake and I are just a few feet away and we both got multiple fish on the screen. Oh yeah, we got three on the screen. One from here. There he is. Look at that. There we go. Just took a little competition to get them going. They are so much fun in the winter. Oh yeah. There we go on the coffin spoon, but just barely hooked. I mean, the bite is such a soft bite. They mark so nice, don't they? Yeah, they really do. They, uh, there's no question. With both largemouth and smallmouth, it's so often like I had a fish down there just eyeballing it, eyeballing it, eyeballing it. I could not make him bite. And he was like, they'll, they'll cover up your jig where it's like you can't tell the difference between your jig and the fish, but they still don't have it. And then all of a sudden another fish shows up on the screen and they bite it. They, they really, it really does seem like you gotta have a few fish around end up talking one of them into biting. Here we go, but it was just, I mean, such a light bite. Oh yeah, nice fish. Oh, there he is. Look at that fish. Look how thick it is, my goodness. Just a little football. Awesome, all right, let's fire back. You know, it really amazes me. For such a big fish, the bite is so subtle. You know, it's more like a panfish bite, like we've been saying. So it's important to use the right setup. And what I've been using today is the St. Croix Premier Ice Rod Combo. Now I've got the 36 inch rod in a medium power. And what's real nice about this is you've got enough backbone to handle these bigger fish, you know, two, three, four pounders. And, uh, but it's still got a sensitive tip so you can really detect those light bites. And I've just got it paired up with some six pound Suffix Advanced Mono, down to a little barrel swivel, down to a uh, coffin spoon with a waxworm on it. Got him, there we go. I landed on a hole that had a bunch of them in it. And here he is, let's see, ooh, nice one. Nice, isn't that great? That is such a cool deal. It does seem like it's kind of interesting that I was like these, there's a bunch of holes around me, like these three holes and, I, and they were in like 18 and now I came out to 21 and uh, there's fish all over in 21. Like it looked like a school of crappies here and the ones that were shallower went bite and was, I just got down there and it was bam. Such a beautiful fish. So let me get this guy back and explain kind of the habitat that you're looking for to find smallmouth bass. Now typically I would say they're, they're near flats and this is a flat out in front of us here. It's a big sand flat, but it's got a pretty sharp edge that drops into the base and I mean it's 60, 80 feet behind us. And one common feature that I've seen with a lot of good smallmouth habitat is there will be some type of big rock down there. And this is doesn't have a ton of rocks around it, but there are quite a few rocks in this area that are like those great big boulders and they do seem to, to like those areas. However, I've found smallmouth wintering holes on, you know, just an 18 foot sand grass flat. So they can be in a number of different places, but typically if you're looking to find smallmouth wintering areas, you're looking for deeper flats that have some type of a, like a big, you know, big boulders on top of them. It doesn't have to be carpeted with them, but it can be a, 
a sandy bottom with a big boulder here, a couple big boulders there, just kind of scattered about, and these fish will just mill around that around that area. You'll see them, they're just like at a slow pace. They're just kind of wandering over here, and then they're making their way back there, and they're, but they're never leaving the area. That's the whole deal, is once you find where they're, where they're at, I mean, they're not gonna leave this, this stretch for the next, well, basically from November until March, they're just gonna be here April, whenever the ice goes out. There we go, nice. Little guy though, but we'll take him. So much spunk, even for the smaller ones. They just put up a good fight. There we go. Rip and wrap's gonna just kill him today. Beauty, fire him back. You know, that last fish came on the wrap, a little ultralight rip and wrap, and this thing's been working great today. So it's a size three, I think in the hot steel color. Um, but some other baits that we've been catching them on have been a Northland coffin spoon. We paired it with a few waxworms. There we go, on the coffin spoon. Jerry's been having a bunch of success on the VMC Mongo jig. You know, he's paired that with a couple spikes, a couple waxies, and he's been catching the crap out of them with that. Why I like it, it's a bigger hook. It's got a bigger hook gap than most little panfish jigs. And you can see it's like when they hit it, it's like it's perfectly designed to just fit right in that little pad of a, of a large mouth or a small mouth's upper jaw. I have also had some good luck here using Buckshot spoons here with a dropper chain. So you got, you know, big enough, calls them in, it's got a rattle, but below it's got the dropper chain, so it's got something smaller to key in on. And the last but not least has been the wrap with jig and wrap. You know, we've had a bunch of success on a variety of different baits, but the real key has been how we've been working them. You know, it's been real subtle, right? These bass don't want to chase. So it's been real just pounding on the spot and letting those fish come to you. Oh, we got a monster, people. Oh. And look what it ate right there. A little swirl drop kick unhooked. Oh, what a beauty. Pop right off from there. Perfect, another great big smallmouth bass. We have had a fantastic day catching tons of big fish. We've put our work in, drilling a number of holes, but watching fish on Mega Live on the 2D, we've been able to stay on them when we're never in a lull. We've been catching these Doubled things. Doubled in. One after the other. That nice double up, it's been awesome. Go try some smallmouth bass next time you're out on the ice. They really are a blast. Sweet, off they go. Beat it.